This is part 77 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to extend the built-in identity user class in ASP.NET Core. First, let's understand why should we extend the identity user class. As you can see from the screenshot here, this built-in class has got very limited set of properties like ID, username, email, password hash, etc. But what if I want to store additional data about the user like his gender, city, country, etc. We don't have these properties within this built-in identity user class. So if I want to be able to store additional information about the user, that's when we extend this built-in identity user class. Generally speaking, Identity API in ASP.NET Core offers several extension points and this built-in identity user class is one such extension point. To be able to extend this class, all we need to do is create a custom class that derives from the identity user class and in this custom class, we include properties for all the data fields that we want to capture. In this case, I included just one property and that is city. But you get the idea, you can include as many properties as you you want. You can name this custom class anything you want but it is customary to name it application user. So our first natural step is to add this class to our project. So let's flip out to Visual Studio and I'm going to place it in the models folder. So right click add and we want to add a class and let's name this class application user. We want this class to extend the identity user class. So let's specify that as the base class bring in the required namespace and we want to include a property for capturing city. The data type is string and the name of the property is city. Next, we need to find all references of this built-in identity user class and replace those references with our custom class application user. And the easiest way to do that is within Visual Studio, right click on the identity user class because we want to find all the references of this class and then select find all references from the context menu. As you can see, there are seven references. The first reference is within account controller. So let's use our application user class instead of the built-in identity user class. Bring in the required namespace. Next reference is in the application user class itself. We don't want to change this. We want our application user class to inherit from the identity user class. So let's leave it like that. Next reference is in startup.cs. We want to change this. So instead of using identity user, let's use application user. The next four references are within the account controller. So let's replace all of them. At this point, let's find all references of the identity user class one more time. Notice, as expected, we have only one reference and that reference is within our application user class. We don't want to change this. So let's leave it like that, run our project and see what happens. We have an exception, no service for type sign in manager of identity user has been registered. If we are getting this error, the most likely cause is somewhere else within our application. We are still using this built-in identity user class instead of our custom class application user. To find where else we are using this built-in identity user class within Visual Studio, use the keystrokes Control Shift F simultaneously to bring up this find and replace window. We want to find identity user class and make sure you have entire solution selected and click find all button. We have several references. All these references on the top are within the migrations code that is auto generated by Visual Studio and this reference is within the application user class. We don't have to change that and notice this reference. This is within the layout file and if we take a look at that, we are injecting sign in manager of identity user here. But if we take a look at our startup.cs file, notice here we have registered our custom class application user instead of the built in identity 
user class and because we have not registered the identity user class and in our layout file we are trying to use that identity user and that's the reason we have this exception so obviously to fix it all we have to do is instead of using identity user let's use application user With this change in place, let's reload our web page and see if we still get the exception. There we go. We no longer have the page crash and we see the list of employees. Our next step is to include a column for this new property city in the underlying database table ASP.NET users. So if we take a look at the columns that we have in this ASP.NET users database table, Notice these columns correspond to the properties of this built-in identity user class. At the moment, we do not have a column for this city property in this ASP.NET users table. Notice as I scroll to the right, we don't see the city column. Now to generate city column, we want to create a new migration. So in the package manager console window, let's use add-migration command. Let's name this migration extend identity user. Migration created, but we have a problem here. Notice within this file, we do not have any migration code to add city column to the ASP.NET users table. So this means when we apply this migration to the underlying database, it's not going to add city column to the ASP.NET users table. We'll understand what's causing this problem and how to fix it in just a bit. But before that, first let's remove this migration using this remove dash migration command. Now, if we take a look at this app DB context.cs file, we have our application DB context class and it derives from this built in identity DB context class. At the moment, this class does not know it has to use our custom class application user instead of this built in identity user class. And that's the reason the migrations API was not able to generate migration code to add city column to the ASP.NET users database table. Now to tell the identity DB context to use our custom class application user, we pass it as a generic parameter. With this change in place, if we generate the migration again, Notice now in this up method, we have migration code to add city column to the ASP.NET users database table. Now let's apply this migration to the underlying database using update database command. There we go. We have our migration successfully executed. At this point, if we take a look at our ASP.NET users table, we still do not have the city column. Let's refresh the table. And if we scroll to the right, we still do not see the city column. Let's actually close the table and reopen it. Notice now we see city column. Next, on our user registration view, which we can get to by clicking on the register link here, we want to include a UI field to capture user city. So in Visual Studio, our register view is right here. As you can see, the model for register view is register view model. So within this register view model class, we want to include a property for city. The data type is string. Let's name the property city. Next, in the register view, Below the confirm password field, let's include a label and an input element for city. I'm actually going to make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. The property name is city. The same here. We don't need the validation tag helper. Finally, we have to do the corresponding changes in the register action within our account controller. This is the register action method that responds to HTTP POST. Notice here, we are creating a new instance of our class application user and we are populating username and email. In addition to these two properties, we also want to populate city property. And the value for this is going to come from this incoming model object. So on the register view model, we have city property. Let's save all these changes and reload our web page. 
Notice now we have a UI field to capture city. Let's set this to London and let's register a new user using the email test at presumetech.com. Let's also provide password and confirm password. There we go. Our new user with this email test at presumetech.com is successfully created. So if we take a look at the data we have in our ASP.NET users database table, Notice the data for the city column is captured as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.